Right here we go, five minutes of exposure with the L-Extreme. I am completely worried about the thermal noise. It's very hot tonight. Let's see. Today's been a scorching day in England. I think it's been about 28 degrees on average with a high of 30. I think my car was saying 32 degrees. And we're like a few days after the summer solstice, so very hot. Lovely day, not a single cloud, but still quite hot. I think you'll agree, 30 Celsius. And um, tonight's the best kind of night to do deep sky narrowband imaging with an uncooled DSLR, like I'm sure a lot of you have it's not ideal, long exposures and high temperatures wreck data, but I have the new Optolong L Extreme filter to try out. So tonight is clear and we're gonna use it. You can always tell when there's been multiple clear nights in a row because my cable management is extra special. I know you're all jealous of it, aren't you? Uh, these go somewhere, this is the camera I think you know I keep telling myself that <laughs> I'll fix this one day and you know that day never comes it's something I wanted to show you for a while now but never got around to it's how I'm powering my telescope at the minute well to be exact the mount at the moment so this is the Nevada regulated power supply it's good for six to eight amps 13.8 volts regulated um has this nice metal construction to it and cigarette lighter on the front though it does have me uh, negative and positive poles on it and an ammeter good old-fashioned ammeter no digital display here and what i do with this now mine goes up to the Lynx Astro 4 channel dew controller. I don't have a dew bands in it at the moment. I keep meaning to, if I end up keeping this rig, which I think I might, goes into that. And then just these really flexible silicon cables goes through the bottom of the dovetail. And it supplies continuous regulated power to my mount and it's really clean signal. I've had no issues powering my mount. It also was here. When I was powering the 533MC Pro, it could power the two-stage cooling on that. So that was really convenient. But yeah, I have a write-up of the review of this power supply unit on my website. What I do during the night is I just pop that in there. I rest the lid over the top to protect it from any dew and condensation. Even though it does stay warm, it should be fine. And that powers my equipment quite nicely and quite happily. So. If you're ever wondering what I use, if you've seen it kicking about in any of my pictures or my videos, that's what it is. So yeah, uh, so yeah, I think it's going to probably be about 24 degrees this evening. And these cameras are not designed for long exposures in those temperatures. Absolutely not. I'm, while I'm using a DSLR, I really miss the winter. I generally miss winter anyway because it has some really nice targets, but so does summer. But this thing is going to be crying this evening. I took a shot of the Eastern Vale Nebula on Monday night, and I was using 10 minute long sub exposures with this camera. The sensor was 28 degrees. Any hotter, and I would have lost everything. Like, I wouldn't have been able to have any data. I've been there before. Um, you may have seen that video. That was also a 600D with the tri-band filter, I think. Yeah, that was with the tri-band 
I had the L Enhance. Apparently I've used multi-bandpass filters quite a lot. I started off with the Tri-Band from Altair, sold that, then I got the L Enhance to review from First Light Optics, and now I've got this L Extreme to review from First Light Optics. I don't even think this is for general sale at the minute, so I'm extremely happy and humble about that. Tom, if you're going to out me about that, yes, I will use that joke before. Sorry, I'm not this original. <laughs> but yeah, onto the target choice of this evening. Still mid-June, I haven't got a view of the south. It's all about Cygnus for me. It's going to be really high by 10, half past 10, 11, when it gets dark enough to image. So I've done a supernova rem 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 so I've done a supernova remnant with it. So I'm going to use it on an emission nebula now, and I've all I've been all about the Pelican nebula lately. It fits really nicely into this field of view. Because of the temperature, I'm probably not going to be doing 10 minute frames. I'm probably not going to be doing seven minute frames. I'm probably going to be doing four, five at a push, though I'll have to check them later on as night falls and see what they look like, see what the signal to thermal noise ratio is like. It's times like this I miss a cooled camera, but I ended up doubling down on the DSLRs. I've got some other goodies coming soon to help me out in that in that aspect. Yeah, that's uh, that's about it. So just wait for it to get dark. has been made I'm going to try five minutes of exposures uh, as you can see I'm doing a pause of two minutes just to give the sensor a chance because it's, it's going to be far too hot and by the time it's quarter past three in the morning anyway I'm going to be fast asleep because I have work in the morning and it's going to get bright anyway PhD 0.2 Bird. At least something's going nice tonight. I can only see, but I feel like I've been in this position before. I miss cool cameras. <laughs> so today is Friday. That was the Wednesday, like I said. It's actually Friday, nearly 11 p.m. Um, the Thursday I shot dark frames because I like to shoot my dark frames on cloudy days when I can just temperature match the camera and not burn light. But got new dark frames around the 30 degrees. I'm gonna load them into bridge and I'm gonna show you the pictures. I'm gonna show you the final stack. The final stack's like an hour and a half. APT started losing connection to the camera and that was like the main issue I was facing that night apart from the heat. But we're gonna look at the pictures in bridge. I'm just gonna show you how little data there is. And then I'm going to jump into Photoshop and we're going to have a play with this data. So here we are in Bridge now. I'm just showing you like this, is how I'm now previewing my um, RAW files at the DSLR. Bridge is free if you have the Adobe Photography Bundle, like I do. Um, and these are five minute long sub exposures at ISO 800 and F6, I think it is, with an 80 millimeter telescope. And there's just nothing. There's barely anything. You can see some stars, and that's about it. There's no nebulosity on show. I would have much rather done 10 minute long sub exposures, at least, I think. But just this temperature, like you can see 30 degrees. These are all 29, 30, what we got? A couple of 33 degree images in here. So it was a very hot night. Using a cool camera is great, and I really would have loved the cool camera right now, but I want to be able to do what I can with more affordable gear because I feel like that's what a lot of people are going to be using so I want to try and do more with DSLR at the moment and if we actually now go over to Photoshop you can see straight away that there's a significant sense of banding on this picture and I think that's down to temperature someone once said it was down to lack of light and I can kind of believe that with the L Extreme filter it's very aggressive I would have much rather have had 10 minute long sub exposures at least I think with this target combination filter etc but man this data got hammered <laughs> I've seen this before 
this banding, I just don't know how to fix it. It annoys me. It's a limitation of DSLRs, I think. I like using DSLRs because there's something accessible about them. And I think a lot of people are using DSLRs. So I want to show you what DSLRs can do. However, in the height of summer during a heat wave, they're not great. Anyway, let's zoom in. And you can see in the in the sky, there's this like walking noise, even though this was dithered. I think again, that's probably down to heat and an aggressive amount of noise reduction. I'm not even gonna lie, there's like four passes of noise reduction here. You can see in the nebulosity, there's just data straight up missing. Um, slight halos appearing. I'm gonna have to keep an eye on that. If you know me by now, you probably know my feelings about halos. But you know, for only an hour and a half of data, what was that, 13 times five minute long pictures, I think it's okay, there's a lot of detail begin to appear. I'm in Bortle 6. Some detail begin to appear and I like the color tone coming through. It's very reminiscent of the L Extreme, which makes a lot of sense, right? Because the L, I mean, it's very rem reminiscent of the L Enhance, which makes sense, right? Because the L Extreme is kind of like a narrower L enhance and they kind of locked off the hydrogen beta, get out of here. Not a lot of targets have that. But I like the color tone and I like the detail coming through. I just need a cooler sensor, I think. Anyway, not dwelling on the temperature too much. This is good, this is a good start. I'm probably not gonna do much more on it. This is what I got out of stacking. This is after a couple of curve stretches to make the data appear, but you can see the very apparent green color cast that did not calibrate out during stacking. Maybe they're missing a setting. Maybe I need to change a setting. This was fixed with just a, a simple levels adjustment. You can see all my steps, my history steps here. But yeah, after a sim after just a levels adjustment and a few more, a few more tweaks, I got this. And you know, I'm happy enough with this. This is a good start. Don't know if I'll carry on with it because like I said, just the lack of data and the temperature, I might try again when the temperature goes down. But this is all right. I think there's a nice bit of detail there, all things considered. The Pelican isn't the only thing I've shot so far with the L Extreme. I've done the Eastern Veil Nebula as well. I think this come out really nice. And especially now I'm looking at it on this monitor and not on the laptop screen. But again, like this wasn't much data either. I think this was maybe an hour of 10 minute long pictures. This, these were 10 minute long photos. It was slightly cooler, but that's, it looks clean, right? But if we pull the stretch up, there you go. Look, you can still see the banding on this image, but I think it's less prominent. To be honest, the nebulosity looks really great with this stretch on it, but just, it's really bad. The noise is really bad. Again, DSLR in summer. You people who live in really hot climates, you need to let me know what you're doing because wow. <laughs> but I like the way that nebulosity looks with this stretch on, to be honest. So far, my initial feelings are it's a very nice filter. It's just getting a bit of time to use. It's a very nice filter. I'm enjoying it. I think it's getting a lot of details through. I'm noticing a bit of haloing and to answer a question that I'm, I'm already anticipating because I've had it a few times already. L Extreme or L Enhance? I'm not ready yet to give you a verdict. I've only took two pictures and I'm not even finished with those. But I think the L Enhance is a fantastic filter. You can see my review of it up there. But the L Extreme has definitely got potential. I just need more time with it. And then there'll be a review coming from that. So be sure you subscribe ready for that. But you know, for a first couple of images, I'm impressed with the L Extreme. I'm looking forward to getting more pictures and actually finishing one. But yeah, apart from the very obvious noise damage, I think these pictures are coming out quite nicely. The detail captured is good. I'm liking the band pass. What are you thinking? What are you feeling? Let me know in the comments down below. And yeah, keep an eye out for the L Extreme and also keep an eye out for my review. That'll be coming definitely once I have a bit more time with this filter. But in the meantime, thanks very much for watching everybody. Hope you have clear skies. Keep looking up, keep them cameras clicking. See you later.